Since we already looked at one Toys R Us exclusive R.I.D. figure, I figured we might as well get the other one out of the way, you know, just to have them both complete and on the review channel. So we're going to take a look at another one, and it's a robotic scorpion. I love my robotic scorpions, as we know on this channel. So, let's take a look and see how Paralon came out. Obviously, redeco of the Scorponok figure that is at mass retail. However, there is a bit of a remolding that is noteworthy, and we'll get to that once we get to robot mode. For now, he's pretty much the same mechanical scorpion, except done up in a two-tone shade of purple with little bits of gray sticking through here and there. Uh, I far prefer this color scheme to the browns of Scorponok. I don't know why, maybe it's... I don't know, maybe it's just the fact that I identify with the G1 Scorponok when I hear the name so much that I just need that purple or I need that green. I need one of those colors and this gives it to me in droves. Well, one of the colors anyway. It is a very nice look, very cool, very smooth uh, endoskeleton look to him. Taking a look at the head, he's got multiple eyes going, not as many as you would see on a scorpion, but hey, they did what they could, and an opening mouth. I'm not entirely sure that's anatomically correct, but hey, it looks mean, doesn't it? It's very cool. Very cool. I dig that. So, you have the, all the little bug legs on. Uh, it's missing one. Okay? Okay, thank you to commenters who actually do correct me when I talk about scorpions on this, on this channel. I do know that the arms don't count. They are technically a, a different appendage altogether. He should have another leg coming out. We're not going to harp on it too much so because there's only sometimes there's only so much you can fit in and they do look good so i'm not going to gripe too too much about it it's just missing one leg that's all scorpion tail going all the way up leading to a very vicious stinger which is actually where you store his sword which i think is a very appropriate place for a mechanical scorpion to store a sword then you have the claws over here with a little hit of yellow like most R.I.D. figures, not a whole lot of paint going on. You get a little bit of yellow up there, a little bit down here. That's about it, really. There are some details that are painted over, of course, the eyes and the top of the head here. There's little bits where there's a metallic purple rather than the bare plastic. But for the most part, pretty thin on paint, which is sometimes good and sometimes bad, but it's up to you to decide. Um, the claws I wish could open. That's one of the few times I've seen a Scorpion Transformer where the claws couldn't open in any way. But there's a very good reason for that. And again, we get to that in robot mode. It does, however, create a bit of a rattling noise as the way this guy transforms. As you have some pretty loose connections here. This part doesn't really peg in, but it is secure. It's not going anywhere. I will tell you one little thing. On mine, the shoulder assemblies tend to be a little bit loose. So... I've actually taken to uh, turning the shoulders to look this direction. That way they cannot fall at any point. And this way you can have the claws raised up like he's ready to bear down strike at something, which I think is a really cool look. Speaking of cool looks, if you want something more natural looking, you can go ahead and remove the sword as a stinger. Flip this up, and you have an actual stinger molded in, which gives you something more akin to how a scorpion would actually look. That's a cool little optional detail. Very unnecessary with the big sword acting as the stinger, but it's a very cool touch. Let's you do a little bit more with him. So yeah, articulation-wise, a little bit in the tail. You can move it. It's, all, it's on a ball joint, so that works. Has a bend here as well as a bend down here. The actual tail does not reach far enough to actually get a sting, but if you do have the sword attached, you can get it past his head. So I guess... That's going to account for a more natural sting effect. But that's about as close as you're going to get to actually striking any of your enemies. Unless they come from the side, which is a little bit weird. Or behind. Mm -mm -mm. Though if you're chasing a scorpion down, you, and you can't catch up to a scorpion running, you, you've got to, you, you got to find better mo mobility, is what can I say. It does have about a hollowing to his tail. That's unfortunate, but it's a minor nitpick at this point with R.I.D. All right, so that's about it for playability. Legs don't do a whole lot, and then, yeah, I've already shown off what the arms can do. You can rotate them as well, but that's about it. Let's get him to robot mode, and we'll show you what else this toy is up to. For starters, the legs unpegged from the underside, and, man, they are long legs. So we rotate legs for days here. Flip the feet out, 
and then the legs themselves are supposed to be that digitigrade leg thing like the movie toys do all the time. I typically hate, but somehow it works for this guy. He's got that gangly look that makes it uh, more appropriate. Fold the legs up to the back like so. And here I'm going to have to work the torso a little bit in order to unclip it. It's going to double hinge downward like so. It's going to fall to that point, and unfortunately, you're going to find there's nothing really tabbing the torso together. It holds firm enough, so it's not a huge critique, but I really wish there was some way to peg in this and make it a little bit more secure. Unfortunately, not going to happen. Fold the head of the scorpion back, fold out the robot head, and bring it back up. At this point, transforming scorpions would typically be done. However, this toy goes a little bit farther. We're going to open up the claws, and that allows us to slide them down. What? What? We've gone insane. But no, they're going to slide down the arm. We're going to adjust the arm into its proper position. We're going to take this loop of plastic that's around it, and we're going to close it up to the torso here, which is actually how the torso is supposed to hold on. But, you know, I always like redundant peggings and such. Close that up, and that is what we're going is that uh, that's the clever trick to this particular figure it's a definitely a different way of doing a scorpion transformer and it takes a little bit to figure out how it actually works but typically you just wiggle it enough and eventually it falls into the place it's supposed to go mm. all right now now the torso secure now we got everything close the claw back up close that back up and that's going to be our robot mode in which case i'll probably have to adjust the camera because this guy comes Quite a bit taller than you would typically expect. Tall and lanky. That is our ID uh, Paralon. And I keep wanting to say Scorbinok because, of course, he's a scorpion. It's one of the rare times a scorpion is not named Scor Scorbinok in Transformers. Which is kind of ironic because if we look at the head, we're going to find someone a little bit familiar. The head is actually designed after the uh, animation head in Beast Wars Scorponok. That's pretty much why I wanted this version over uh, Scorponok. Above the fact that I really do prefer the two-tone purple to all the browns, <laughs> it's that head. I love that there's an irony to the fact that he's molded to look like a previous Scorponok. It has some colors of a previous Scorponok, but doesn't get the name Scorponok. I'm sorry, Paralon. You'll be Scorponok to me. As we can see, it is a very nice head sculpt, very reminiscent of the Beast Wars character. I really love that they did this. It's so unnecessary, and it's something for older fans in a toy line that typically doesn't do anything for older fans. So that, that's a huge plus. I really, really adore that. Looking at his robot mode, he is very lanky, very tall, and... Height on this guy is something of a uh, it fa you know something of an X factor, since of course because of the digigrade legs he can be exceptionally tall, exceptionally leggy, or quite stout and short. All up to you. He kind of gains a little bit of uh, personality that way, and you can kind of make him however you want. I kind of prefer it somewhere in the middle, somewhere in the middle right there. Very. Very different design. I always, I like the way the claws form up those heavy shoulder pauldrons, too. I like I like heavy-looking shoulder guards on Transformers, and to have them swept back like this is a pretty unique look. I don't see this very often. Very cool. It's very different. It's what I appreciate about the toy. Taking a look, he has some paint here in the robot mode. Little bits of yellow reappear. There's his poker chip, and then, of course, a little bit of the lighter shades of purple deco for the belly you can see the same on the arms that also have that darker purple painted on three tones of purple going into this toy which is kind of a cool thing nothing really on the legs there's a darker plastic on there for that darker purple which accounts for the hips as well we only really saw it in the robot mode on the legs so that's about it there so he has a lot of uh, little color shades going on i think there's enough paint to just make him interesting to look at he does kind of suffer from the R.I.D. lack of paint thing, but he lets a lot of plastic color do the work for him, which 
isn't necessarily a bad thing. Less chipping, less scratching to be had, so that's not a bad thing. Uh, no gimmicks, since it's a little basic figure for kids, but we can do articulation. His head's kind of weird. I expected kind of like a side-to-side -side hinge so he could look left and right, but he still has the same kind of like ball-jointed swivel thing, so he gets a little bit of up look, and he gets a little bit of side-to-side, -side, but looking left and right is extremely limited. You only have about that much range to it. That's unfortunate. The shoulders are a bit of a surprise because you have this panel to flip out and increase the range of his arms. You can even flip that out too if it gets in the way. It's a very nice and very thoughtful little thing to include, which does increase his shoulder articulation greatly. Fully working uh, swivel there in the uh, bicep. Very good elbow. Very much beyond the 90. Waist, none. It's unfortunate. Ball joints in the hips, working out great, plenty of range there. Full thigh rotation, both knee and what would actually be the ankle on a on an actual animal, uh, working pretty good. You can just take them straight out and choose which one you want to be the knee if you don't like that look. It's all up to you. And a little back and forth on the foot. Nothing really that works on the articulation level there. Nothing that's going to help you anyway. That gives him plenty of articulation for posing. I think all those extra joints in the legs actually really helps out to give him some decent looking action poses. The one thing I worry about with legs like that is you've got a lot of little hinges in there that really, really get uh, manipulated by uh, how yours comes out of the factory. It's one of those times where uh, quality control makes a huge difference in whether or not your toy comes out good. So. Hopefully yours will have the tight hinges in the legs that will actually allow him to get into some cool poses and stand sturdy. Adding in his sword, which is this beautiful little multi-layered scimitar, with some internal detailing, looks exceptionally cool. I think the scimitar for the typically uh, sand-affiliated scorpion works pretty well as a melee weapon, as well as a very, very awesome stinger. That, my friends, is Paralon. I think he's worth going out of the way for. This was a surprisingly nice figure out of R.I.D. with a really clever transformation trick I've never seen on a Transformer Scorpion before. Let's him have a unique look that isn't just, my hands are gigantic pinchers. A uh, cool weapon, enough deco to really kind of break him up and make him look good. And of course, he's got the head I really, really like. So there's a little treat there for uh, older fans and Beast Wars fans. One of the few things that came out for Beast Wars 20th anniversary. Uh, as far as superiority to the retail version, that's just how you like the deco and the head changes. For me, this is the superior version. For you, eh, you never know. But still, good mold. Good mold. Surprising, surprisingly nice mold out of R.I.D.